Hello guys, in today's video we will be discussing cognitive psychology. So what is cognitive psychology, what are the principles of cognitive psychology and finally what are its limitations. Cognitive psychology began to emerge partly as a response to behaviorism. While behaviorism believes that language is essentially acquired through a process of stimulus response and reinforcement or punishment and that humans are not born with the ability to learn languages, cognitivists argue that language is not just a learner habit devoid of creativity. They believe that we also use language creatively. Later on, cognitive psychologists have challenged the limitations of behaviorism, especially its focus on observable behavior. Therefore, a meta view to language has been developed with the introduction of cognitive psychology. The defender of this theory states that a learner can use language creatively and not just imitate what's being said around him. This is because they are constantly using their cognitive abilities to think and creatively manipulate language. Behaviorists acknowledged the existence of thinking but identified it as a behavior. In contrast, cognitivists argued that the way people think impacts their behavior and therefore cannot be a behavior in and on itself. Critics of behaviorism noted that it failed to account for how internal processes impacted behaviors. So, cognitivists later argued that thinking is so essential to psychology and that the study of thinking should become its own field. Therefore, cognitivism became the dominant force in psychology in the late 20th century, replacing behaviorism as the most popular paradigm for understanding mental function. The cognitive approach believes that internal mental processes can be scientifically studied. In other words, cognitive psychologists believe that in order to understand a behavior, you have to understand what goes on the brain to cause the behavior. Therefore, the cognitive approach to learning pays more attention to what goes on inside the learner's head and focuses on mental processes rather than just observable behaviors. For them, changes in behavior are observed but only as an indicator to what is going on in the learner's brain. This period is sometimes referred to as the cognitive revolution as a worth of research on topics such as information processing, language, memory, attention, perception, metacognition and so on. So we can conclude that the cognitive learning theory is a broad theory used to explain the mental processes and how they are influenced by both internal and external factors in order to produce learning in an individual. Here we can note that cognitive psychology did not reject behaviorism but rather it was an expansion that accepts that mental states exist. Cognitive psychology, in contrast to behaviorism, is interested in the way the human mind thinks and learns. It is interested in the cognitive processes that are involved in learning and how the learner is involved in the process of learning. In cognitive psychology, there were two approaches to cognition. At one extreme are information theorists who have drawn the analogy of the brain as a highly complex computer and seek to explain its working in terms of rules and models of how aspects of learning take place. These theories look beyond the behavior to explain brain-based learning, which is a theory that is based on the structure and function of the human brain. That is to say, as long as the brain is not prohibited from fulfilling its normal processes, learning will occur. In some cognitive learning theories, learning is described in terms of information processing. Information processing means how individuals perceive 
analyze, manipulate, use, and remember information. Information processing psychologists are mainly concerned with the way in which people take in information, process it, and act upon it. In this approach, factors as attention, perception, and memory become the focus of the work of information processing theorists. They usually construct models to try to account for the way in which the human mind works. Attention is the behavioral and cognitive process of selectively concentrating on a discrete aspect of information while ignoring other perceivable information. Attention is one area where information processing approach has provided valuable insights in, into the working of the human mind. For example, some learners have considerable difficulty in paying attention to their work and this will have negative effect on their learning. Another area which developmental theorists considered is memory. We can say that memory is an information processing system, therefore we often compare it to a computer. It is the set of processes used to encode store and retrieve information over different periods of time. The second approach to cognition is the so-called constructivist movements. It is based on the work of the Swiss developmental psychologist John Piaget. Piaget's work on child psychology, for instance, has paved the way for great processes underpinning language acquisition from infancy to adulthood. Psychologists taking this approach have been mainly concerned with ways in which individuals come to make their own sense of the world. John Piaget believed that knowledge is something that is actively constructed by learners based on their existing cognitive structures. Piaget disagreed with the behaviorist theory which focuses strictly on observable behaviors and he concentrated more attention to what went on inside the learner's head instead of how they reacted. Piaget has outlined a developmental approach whereby humans use assimilation and accommodation principles to process information in a mental organized structure. We can say for the moment that these mental organized structures are prior conditions to any speech production or discourse operation. To conclude, we can say that learning happens as a result of brain processes where knowledge is transferred from short to long-term memory. And in order for this to happen, new information must be linked to old information and information and concepts must be logically organized. And here, the role of the teacher is to help learners organize new information for later recall. Learning more about how people think and process information not only helps researchers gain a deeper understanding of how the human mind or the human brain works, but it allows psychologists to develop new ways of helping people deal with psychological difficulties. Cognitivism added to the theories of behaviorism by looking at learners not as blank slates but as individuals with unique points of view, experiences and knowledge. Moving on to the limitations of this approach, we can say that cognitive psychology has a narrow focus on mental processes. For example, the use of the computer analogy means that information processing researchers focus mostly on the logical aspects of cognitive processing and less on the emotional, creative and social aspects that also affect thinking. Cognitive psychology has often relied on comparisons with how computers work as a possible way the mind might work. But 
Is this really how the brain works? This is the question.